A ver, muy bien, muy bien. Y buenos días, buenos días. Feliz, feliz lunes, feliz lunes. Uh, buenos días. A uh, little bit of housekeeping notes para que sepan, just so you know. Uh, Scassia has asked me to plug one more time that all of their classes for summer are open for registration starting today. If you're not a Scottsdale resident, first day to register will be tomorrow, Tuesday. But if you're a Scottsdale resident, uh, um, uh, today is first day for registration for summer classes. Okay. Um, you've got grandkids and you need those swim classes. Get in there quickly because those, I know, man, those fill. Those are, it's like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like, you know, jockeying down the highway trying to get swim classes for kids. So if you've got to do that, get, get on it. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, a ver. Um, do we have the class here in, in, in uh, summer? Do we have uh, next classes in the summer? Do you have a, a class in the summer? You mean in person? No. No, 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 no. Awesome. I mean, the group like this. Oh, yeah. I'll be, yeah. They all run. They all run. The only thing that may have a hard time getting enough people will probably be the absolute beginner class because summer, there are just too many people out and about. I mean, if, yeah. if I get enough, yay, but yeah, yeah sometimes I don't. Um, okay, so sign up is coming on. Excuse me. Uh, Marilyn, have, uh, Cece. Uh, the question, when is the next Spanish class that you're going to give? Uh, scheduled for, and is that going to be an in-person class or an online It will not class? be in-person. It, it will be on Zoom, and it will be starting, uh, they're, they're registering now for summer. So oh. the same things run all the way through. So um, first question is, this, this class is the right level. If you're in this class now, this is the right one. Um, uh, the, the next step up is my Wednesday class, but it's an evening class. And, and those folks are, for some of you, a little more advanced than you are. Not for all of you, but for some of you. So which one is the right one? It would be this one, the same one, okay? Because I always cover different topics. We always do conversational stuff, uh, uh, but this is the right level, okay. Uh, and if you have more questions about that, you can ask later when we sign off. Uh, Está bien, that is fine. Um, bum, bum, bum. There was one more thing. I was, oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, we have the question of what can I listen to, like TV stuff, TV stuff, shows, programs. What can I listen to? What can I do? Well, okay. Um, one thing you can listen to, and I'm going to put this on a share screen so people can read it, because if I put it in the, I could put it in the chat box, but sadly that does not record, and then the people who are absent today and listening don't see the chat box. Um, one thing you can uh, check out, uh, some of you may have done so already, is something called Destinos. This is on YouTube. It used to be a PBS thing. Now, mind you, you are going to see shoulder pads from the 1980s. <laughs> it is a blast from the past in terms of women's attire in particular. Okay. The good thing about that, and I will find the actual link and put it in the email post class time, because there, there are a lot of people who have reported things on YouTube from Destinos, but some of them are spotty in here and there. You, uh, you have to look under the Annenberg Foundation, which is what funded this originally, because they have all the episodes. Destinos is probably hands down the best if you are a beginner person and you want to do a lot of listening. Okay. Or you can get his leash. It, it, because it does two levels of speaking speeds mm. on purpose. Some speech is purposely very, very slow because it's supposed to be for beginners. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and some speech is slightly faster, still not native speed mm -hmm. at all. 
if you think it's fast, it's still slow. So, you know, <laughs> um, but, but some is super, super slow and some is just a touch notched up, you know, which is good because you got to work in baby steps, right? So, mm -hmm. um, uh, that is a good thing to do when they do little audio checks and at the end of each episode. And it's a continuing story. It's, it's a telenovela. It is a, it is a telenovela, uh, but they do it specifically to teach Spanish. Okay. That's good because the one that you give it, the, um, the video about the, the, the food, that people talking. Those you know, are all different really topics. Really fast. Okay. Yes. Something yes. Like Yes, yeah. that one was really fast. So, okay, mm -hmm. and we'll come back to that in a second. So, Destinos is one. Um, <clears throat> oh, there was another one done by BBC, but I think it's a continuous like hour or hour and a half. I'm going to have to look up where, if you can still get that on YouTube. There are certain things on, especially if you're on things like Netflix or Amazon. Uh, um, uh, there are certain uh, series that are in, in Spanish that you can sometimes get. Uh, La Casa de Papel is one. Uh, that is on Netflix. It is also called Money Heist. You will probably see it listed under Money Heist. That is Netflix. Uh, I will tell you, they talk pretty fast in that. That's totally native speed. So it's not like we're going to teach you Spanish. Destino says we're going to teach you Spanish through a story. La Casa de Papel is not. Uh, La Templanza. La, is it La Templanza? I think it is La Templanza. There's another one that I believe is on Amazon Prime. Uh, and a lot of these change from season to season. So, you know, I'll even have to check and see. Okay. Is La Templanza even still scheduled uh oh also you got to know that it will be called something else on amazon prime so you know if you type it in as la templanza you may not find it it is called the vineyard okay in english <laughs> that one i would say is also very telenovela it's very swashbuckler uh uh character romance danger and I will say this series beautifully photographed, beautifully photographed, um, uh, very fun to listen to. If you put on subtitles, you'll be able to, you won't understand every bit of it, but you'll pick up spots here and there, which is fine. Um, you know, you watched some of that. I really enjoyed it, Mar uh, Mar Mar Marilyn, because I, I just, uh, I don't know. I don't think it was too fast or, or the, I have subtitles. I don't know. But well, now it, you, you have it's to. It's really beautiful. You, um, La Templanza is, is a very, very good one to watch. Uh, and, you know, a lot of times with listening, people get very frustrated if they don't understand every word. You have to, in essence, kind of let go of that, honestly. Mm -hmm. You have to be content with, it will be Swiss cheese and I will have holes <laughs> in the middle. You have to be content with that. Uh, the one thing that, that um, native speakers in particular who, who teach Spanish emphasizes, you have to listen to a lot, to a lot. Will you understand all of it? No, you won't. With Destinos, you will understand most of it, okay? Uh, but Will you understand all of it? No. Uh, you know, there are some others. I can try to research it a little bit because like I said, uh, you know, what people put on a, a, a particular channel or take off kind of varies from season mm -hmm. to season. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll try to get some more. These little short videos, however, are super useful for that. And uh, if you don't have the time to watch a 30 minute thing, you know, mm -hmm then watch the little ones I give you. Uh, I'm gonna put this up and I wanna point some things out that, oh, remember this one, see, guess the food, yeah. 
And those, by the way, the things that she mentioned are very, very typically very Spanish, not necessarily Mexican at all, except for the churros, you can get churros. Uh, you can still get croquetas, I think, uh, but very, very Spanish foods. Um, the one thing I wanted you to notice, she repeated a whole bunch of times on purpose, puede ser, puede ser, mm -hmm. puede ser, uh, que puede ser, what can it be? Puede ser, it can be, it can be, puede ser. Uh, so, uh, and nice little review on colors, all that sort of thing in there. This one was a very, well, for some of you, very, very fast. Mm -hmm. um, what, uh, and if you could not get a lot of that, that's okay, let it go. You'll have something different this week. Um, uh, I, they repeated a lot, quiere, 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 que quieres hacer, what do you want to do, right? Uh, uh, quiero nadar, quiero caminar, uh, okay, what you must do, what you can do, can is puede, right? Want mm -hmm. is quiere, uh, stem changers, so the point of this mm -hmm. was, you heard in a, not teaching you how to use stem changers, but how these things are sprinkled, mm -hmm. sprinkled. It is very hard for me to find you a video that will use just stem changers through the whole thing, every single verb that is gonna happen because it doesn't happen in real life either, okay? Mm -hmm. So the point of both of those was to show you how stem changing verbs do get sprinkled in to mm -hmm. various conversational things. Yeah. Uh, the one, um, uh, the, the food one was obviously a slower and easier one to follow. Okay. Uh, if you have a specific question about any of those, let me know. Or no. There is a word that she keeps saying, I forgot what is it called? I didn't write it down. It started with A. Um, it's at the beginning and every every time she's trying to uh, explain something about the food and she's like saying something that I can't. Oh, did she I say, cannot... did she say, a ver. No, 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 it's not, not that. that. Okay. Mm -mm. But if she keeps saying that, that word, I, I forgot I didn't write it down. Um, and um, I just don't get it. What is, what is exactly that mean? I'll try to listen through and see which one, if I can guess which one. <laughs> Right. Okay. Was it the word for uh, for guess? For to what? Pardon? To get. Uh, I'm trying to remember. I also wasn't sure about a word. I thought you started with A and looked it up. Uh, is it the word to? Can you guess? Yes, I think it is. Acertar. I think it was that word. Acertar. Ah, acertar is guess. Yeah. Is one of the words for guess. Mm -hmm. Adivinar also means guess. There, there, that's the one. Acertar, that's it. No, okay. no, not, not that one, the last one. A, 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 acertar. No, after that, you say something. Adivinar? Ad, adivinar? Yes. Adivinar also means guess. Ah, Acer, acertar okay. is, a, is a stem changer. Adivinar is not. Okay. It's a regular verb, yeah. Thank you. Um, bien. Okay, ah, mystery solved. Okay. <laughs> Fantastico. Now, with that second video on what you must do, what you can do, what you want to do, uh, a lot of what might have tripped you up were these little uh, uh, words that are the filler words, mm -hmm. okay? So right mid-sentence, right smack in the middle of the sentence, you'll hear people saying words like este. Mm -hmm. este, uh, you know, in other words, what are filler words? Filler words are the um, um words of a language. The uh, the ooh, let's see, the like. He's got like 50, yeah. He's got like five cars in his garage. Um, the word phrases like I mean, let's see. Mm -hmm. So if somebody says, hmm, let's, Hmm, they're thinking something over. Let's see. It'll be, you'll hear, a ver, a ver, a ver, ver. Uh, starts with a V, V-E-R, B-E-R, B-E-R, 
a ver, a, a ver, and it, but it'll sound like one word, a ver, a ver, a ver, a ver is, hmm, let's see. Yeah, what word is it? Okay. Um, digamos, digamos, technically means, let's say, uh, if, okay. if somebody gives an answer and then they give you an example of what they mean by their answer. They'll throw in a, digamos, este all over the place. Este, 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 este. Este technically means this, but este is a filler word with most of these on the street conversations and people constantly put it in there. It's just the well, okay? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of ways, there are a lot of filler words. I'll send you, I'll send you another, a different video on filler words for this week, because when you listen to on the street conversations, people unconsciously, they don't do that on purpose to confuse you. We say words like and um and well and hmm, hmm. Uh, yeah, that's what they have. Even just the sound a, a, a is a filler word. It means somebody is pausing and thinking about what word they're going to fill in next as people do in all languages. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, that might be tripping you up. You have to let that slide by. Este has no deep meaning. It's, it's a filler word on these on the street video conversations. Okay, yeah. Um, okay, a ver. Uh, let's take a look. We were looking last week at E to I stem changes. Um, we're going to do just a little more of that. We're going to look at some exercises that do all stem changes. We're going to do some storytelling. We're going to do a, un poquito de todo, a little bit of everything. And then there is like a new idea I would like to uh, fit in if we get the time. Okay. A ver, moment. Oh, I need to switch my screens a little bit here. Um, Carolyn, could I ask you a question that has nothing to do with where we're going? It was something that was on Duolingo. Um, and it, um, I don't remember exactly what the verbiage was, but it's something like, you know, esta jugadora de baseball. They're, they never, in it, the sentence says, uh, she is not a baseball player. What happens oh. to the A? There's no ah, uh, A. Oh, she is not a baseball player. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Ella no es jugador de baseball. No, ella no es jugadora. Ella no es jugadora de baseball. Uh, after the verb ser, with a job, a profession. Okay, mm -hmm. baseball player is not necessarily a profession, but it's a noun mm -hmm. that tells what somebody does, right? Um, but you will encounter this, especially when we talk about professions. Uh, we say he's a farmer, he's a baseball player, she's, uh, uh, she's an engineer, uh, there is no a uh, or an mm -hmm. in Spanish. They don't use that. Unless there's a modifier. Okay, modifier. Like, uh, ella, es, ella es una buena artista. Because I've stuck a buena in there. You'll hear una buena artista. Una buena. Es, ella es, is. The key is ser. Ella es una buena artista, that's okay. But ella es artista, boom, that's it. If I don't have any filler, uh, any descriptive word connected to artista. Ser, profession, boom, right next to each other. Not she's, uh, she's an artist. Ella es artista, not he's an engineer. Él es in ingeniero. El es ingeniero. Uh, not Martin is a me mechanic. Martin es mecánico. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Spanish just does not use the word a uh with a profession after the verb ser. Boom. 
Okay. That's it. Thank you. There, there's no reason for it. It's just what they do. Hillary, they may see. Yeah. Can I ask a question too from maybe you already answered this before, but why do they always put K after Tango? Tango K Paga. Why is ah, this? And uh, also, is there any other verb that also has to have K after it? Uh, okay. Buena pregunta. Muy buena pregunta. Uh, let's pop this up. Okay. A ver. A ver, a ver, a ver. Uy, momentito. Okay. A ver. Tener que. Tener just. Here is the very unsatisfactory explanation. <laughs> it is unsatisfactory. Uh, tener que infinitivo. That's what it is. Uh -huh. uh, uh, when you've got a two verb phrase, it uses ten, and tener que means has to. Has to. It indicates obligation. <clears throat> you know, I must do this. I have to do this. Uh, uh, tiene que tiene que lavar el uh, carro. Tiene que lavar el carro. Que translates to English as nothing at all. Tener must use this word que when I tag on a second verb, which is an infinitive. Mm -hmm. okay. It just has to. Another verb that uses, not too many verbs use que. Uh, por ejemplo, ooh, another thing that indicates obligation is hay que. Hay que. Mm -hmm. Hay que lavar el carro carries kind of the same meaning except that hay que is very impersonal whereas tiene que lavar el carro uh this that that conjugation of tiene tells you you know one person somebody you know you can fill any name in there mm -hmm. jose luis martin mariana you could fit yeah. any old any old yeah. one person name in there right Tiene que lavar el carro. If I have to do it, tengo que lavar el carro. carro. If, if we all have to do this and pitch in, it's tenemos que lavar el carro. Okay. Uh, and so tener is conjugated very personally for one person, a group of people, for a we group, for a yo, for a tú. Okay. But hay que lavar el carro just means it still indicates obligation. One must wash the car. And in English, we don't say one must very much because it makes you sound like you're snooty and kind of a, you know, yeah, snotty highfalutin kind of thing. Well, okay, it's very formal, one must. We don't conversationally really say that very much. We know what it means. Uh, but here's what we usually say, you have to, you have to do this. And you have to, meaning not you, I'm talking to you, that one person, but any old general you in, out in the population. Like, you have to, here, you have to wash your car after the rain, okay? That kind of you have to, meaning any old person, you, okay? Uh, tener just must use that word que. I uses that word que. Um, so it's basically words, it's the same meaning tiene que and hay que. They they both indicate obligation. Tener que means yeah has to or have to mm -hmm. uh, do something, and that is what that second verb is. That's what that's about. The second verb tells what it is that yeah. somebody has to do, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Tengo que estudiar, tengo que cocinar, tengo que uh, limpiar el baño, tengo que, uh, tengo que arreglar. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so have to and one must, have to and must both say obligation. So it kind of corresponds to the to, because like tener means to have, right? But tener to means have to. as in ownership yeah but when you add the k it's to have to when you add the k it means have to so it kind of corresponds to the two part of no it? No. Like no 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 it's just have that to. we express that idea no i don't want you to think that k can translate as the english word no, no i mean not a translation but it's kind of 
it changes the meaning of from to right. have, have to. She has, she has yeah. two kids. She has to take her kids yeah. to school. That yes. Yeah, yeah. To have to. to okay. Have to. We, oh. yeah. Uh, uh, right. Have to. So it expresses, it, it express. It is used where in English would we say have to yeah. or has to do something, okay? Because mm -hmm. uh, we only have two conjugations, has to and have to. Um, yeah, okay. Other verbs. Now, when this kind of relates to, and I'm just going to fan this out a little bit. Uh, tener que plus an infinitive means you've got uh, two verbs used together, okay? uh to convey really one action we're combining two verbs together when that happens in spanish uh you've got a verb one and you've got a verb two okay Whoop, on, a verb two verb one is always conjugated and verb two is always an infinitive right mm -hmm. so not i watch a movie and i eat popcorn I watch and I eat are two separate things, but I have to eat popcorn <laughs> when I watch a movie, maybe, okay? Um, so when we've got two verbs working together to convey, talk about one action, I have to, I want to, I can eat popcorn, I want to eat popcorn, <laughs> I like, to eat popcorn, <laughs> okay? When we use two verbs together like that, the verb, first verb does get conjugated because it tells you who is doing that activity. But the second verb stays as an infinitive, which means it is not conjugated, okay? Not conjugated, it'll be as an AR or an ER or an IR verb, okay? Uh, sometimes, like with Poder, a stem changer, and tener, another stem changer. Uh, uh, well, sometimes you have a little word in between these two verbs. Sometimes you do not. Sometimes it'll be verb one right next to verb two. Here's an example. Un ejemplo, sí. Um, uh, uy, uh, puedo hablar, puedo hablar dos idiomas. I can speak. Languages. Or we might say, I am able to speak. Okay, there is the two verbs in English. Mm -hmm. I can speak or I am able to speak. Two languages. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes verb one and verb two are separated by a word like te, like tener que, and tener que, si, sí? uh, tienes que, uh, uh, tienes que venir a las tres. You have to come at three o'clock. Ooh, you, you have to come at three o'clock. Tienes que venir a las tres. You could convey that impersonally, not speaking directly to that one human being as tienes que, as hay que, hay que venir a las tres. Uh, you gotta come, you, any old you. If you're talking to a big crowd and you say, hey, this event starts at three, so you gotta come and you're not making it personal, could, you could just express it as I que venir a las tres. And then it means any old person has to. Uh, sometimes verb one and verb two are uh, separated by a word like ah, like uh, vamos a venir a las tres. And this little ah uh, has to be there. I know ah uh, usually means to, T-O, but mm -hmm. ir is a verb that needs an ah. Uh. Mm -hmm. Ayudar, to help, needs the word ah. Uh. Enseñar, to teach, needs the word ah. Uh. Uh, venir, needs the word ah. Uh. Some words, uh, some double verb phrases, verb one, verb two, need that little word ah, and you just have to know which ones do. Now, luckily for you, when you're speaking, because that word is so short, that little ah, people may, if you're talking quickly, and not hear you say it, mm -hmm. <laughs> may just think, oh, they slipped through, right? But this one, they'll really notice if you don't use it. Tener que, that's 
a noticeable thing. Nobody would ever say, tienes no, 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 no. venir, you have to come. Uh, tienes que venir. People expect to hear the que, and if they don't hear the que, they're, whoop, they, got, they miss a beat and they have to think a little harder, okay? Some verbs have nothing at all in between the two. And it's, it's a, a sad game of sometimes you just have to know. I don't know if that helps you, Hillary, but. Yeah, yeah it does, yeah. Thank that's, you. That, and, and you just, with usage, have to get to know which ones do mm. what. Which yeah. ones do what. Marilyn, there's a, a page in our book on page 85, and it has idioms with the verb tenere. Are there a limited number of idioms? Like, do you just have to memorize? Oh, si, sí, los real, yeah. Uh, are there a limited number? I'd say that's a pretty good list uh -huh. right there. Okay. Uh, as surely as you think somebody's got all of them, there is something somebody left off. I'm, I'm not gonna say 100% that that page 85 list is comprehensive and that's every single word. She's talking about this book, by the way. Oh, oh. but um, I just saw that's a good, that's a good, yeah, that, that's a pretty good list. Yeah. I just noticed though, it doesn't say tener que. No, it, no, it doesn't. There, there you go. It's a pretty good list, but it's not <laughs> 100%. And, and often, Often tener que is not put in the idiom list because it's a okay. little different. Those idioms often include something else like tengo celos, I am jealous. Tengo hambre, I am hungry. Tengo sed, I am thirsty. But literally it means I have thirst, I have hunger, I have jealousy. Tengo éxito, I have success. Uh, um, so... Often, often the idioms are put in a category where they say, oh, tener followed by a noun. Okay. Thank you. Idioms are simply, are, the, the idioms are nothing more than just expressions that you cannot translate literally because they don't make sense if you translate. So, tengo hambre, literally, I have hunger, but we don't say it that way in English. They do. Tengo 60 años, I'm 60 years old. Literally, it is, I have 60 years. That's just the way they say it. To them, it feels very natural. To them, it sounds very odd in English to say, I am 60. No one ever says, soy 60. That means I'm a great big number, 60, zero, six, zero. I'm a great big number. <laughs> soy 60 means I'm a great big number. I'm a, I don't know, I'm a piece of sculpture that's a big number that six, says six zero. That makes no sense in Spanish. Mm -hmm. and, uh, to a Spanish speaker, soy sesenta makes no sense at all. Okay. Carolyn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. a, a, a question <laughs> on the uh, ten, she's, uh, when the idioms with uh, tener K, it wouldn't be in there, right? Because you, it's you on page the, 87. Uh, Look oh, at the bottom of page 87. Yeah, do you use the K with the congregated, the congregated version of Tener? We use K only to indicate, uh, uh, well, generally to indicate half to. I mean, that's like 99.9% .9 of the time, Tener K is going to be have to do something. Well, maybe okay. visit some of these Tener idioms. That might be a really useful thing to do. Um, yeah, we'll do some of that. We'll do some more of that. Next week, La Semana Que Viene, because this is coming up for a lot of people. And they are super common. Okay. Bien? Good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. We'll move on. Next week, we will do more. We will incorporate a big chunk to work with tener idioms, things we do with tener, because tener is a verb that is, like, if you said, what are the top 10 verbs used in Spanish in, in 15 minutes of conversation, tener is going to be right up here. So we'll come back to that next week. This is uh, good for me to know that this is coming up for a lot of you. Okay, we're gonna, if we may, <laughs> say back to this whole thing of stem changers. We're gonna look at some E to I stem changers and then we're gonna do um, some review on stem changers in general, in general. Okay, bien. And we're gonna talk about what you need to know about stem changers. And I'm gonna give you a little assignment 
with stem changers. Uh, we're going to take a look here. Ui, momento. Ooh, I never got rid of this properly. And I need to get rid of this properly. I got it. Pop ups everywhere. Stop that. Stop that, Zoom. Okay. There we go. Ah, key. Yay. Wow. Oh. Spin it, spin it, spin it. Spin it. <laughs> spin it. Uy, a ver. ¿Cuál es el tamaño ideal? What, ooh, which one is the... I think it enlarges it when we're done. Let's see if we can... Oh, we're looking only E to I. E to I. Ooh. Oh, this is more for the uh, elementary group. Pides un lápiz de tus compañeros de clase. These are all going to be little spin a wheel uh, questions that use only E to I stem changers. Pides comes from pedir. Pedir is the one you don't want to get wrong because pedo means a fart. F-A-R-T. Yes, it's pido. I ask. If somebody uh, pides un lapis, pides un lapis, do you ask for a, not this, but a pen. Yeah, uh, well, not a pen, but pencil. Yeah. Pides un, I no, no tengo lapis. I don't have a pencil. Pides un lapis. Do you ask for a pencil? Do you ask one of your next door neighbors, compañero de clase, classmates yes. for a pencil? If we answered a question with pides, we would answer with a yo, it would become? Pido. 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 Yeah. Okay, so this is going to be a lightning round just really quick. We're looking at what does it mean and how would you answer it. Then we're going to do some other Sirve buena o mala comida la cafeteria. We're asking about mm -hmm. la cafeteria. <laughs> I know what the answer would be for a 15 year old here. <laughs> Sirve buena <laughs> o mala comida. Mala comida. We're not cafeteria. asking you about yourself. We're asking about la cafeteria. So, ¿cómo, cómo se contesta? How do we answer about la cafeteria? Say they, or do you say it? Is it they, they for the people or it sirve. for the cafeteria? Sirve, stay, sirve. We're asking, does the cafeteria serve? So the answer sirve. uses the, the same. Sirve. 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 sirve buena comida. Sirve. Oh, comida. Oh. sirve mala comida. Serves bad food, right? It's a 50-50 question. And, and it does comida. not say in the cafeteria. It no. just says no. serves good food. The cafeteria. Ah, uh, yes. That is that says, does the cafeteria serve? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you how you may hear that same question differently. We're asking this question. Sirve buena o mala comida la cafeteria. We're asking about the cafeteria. The cafeteria doing that. Okay. Uh, and in a question, of course. This is something you may not have thought about in a while. The subject, the subject, the person doing the action in the question comes late in the question. Mm -hmm. In English, it comes up front. Does mm -hmm. he have a car? Does the cafeteria serve? Yeah. Okay. okay. But in Spanish, the subject of a question trails quite often, kind of late. It will always be after the verb. Okay, well, that makes sense. I'm, I'm not going to say always, but uh, frequently, frequently. Uh, I could say, but with intonation with my voice, hmm, la cafeteria sirve, sirve mala o buena comida. Yeah, I could, mm. la cafeteria, pause, sirve buena o mala comida. I could do that. But very, very frequently, the subject will be after the verb in a question. Verbs lead, I want you to notice that verbs lead off questions mm -hmm. unless you have, unless you have an interrogative, a who, what, when, where, why word, which will bump it just one space back. Okay. Can okay. you uh, answer it with the, uh, se sirve buena? Or se the sirve other way buena? that, yeah, the other way that could be asked is in an impersonal way. Impersonal meaning I'm not putting cafeteria 
or hmm, oh, like this. Se sirve buena comida en la cafeteria. Se sirve. Se mm -hmm. sirve changes the meaning just very slightly to mm -hmm. mean is, is good food or bad food served, is served. Mm -hmm. Not does the cafeteria serve, mm -hmm. but is yes. food served, meaning kind of like a passive voice structure, kind of in English. Is food served? Food is not doing any action. It is being served. It is being acted upon. Okay. Uh, bien. So you may hear it as se sirve. Se sirve just means a very general question. Let me give you another example of a se that will pop up in front of a verb besides se sirve. You know, because se sirve, si, sí. se sirve comida mexicana allá. Is Mexican food served there? Uh, se sirve. Says, oh, you walk in, uh, in un restaurante. Uh, cuando, cuando veo el menú, cuando veo el menú, when I look at the menu, cuando miro el menú, when I look at the menu, uh, cuando miro el menú, huh, se sirve comida vegetariana aquí. Mm -hmm. Is, is vegetarian food served? Uh, Another way you may hear the word say. And again, it is an impersonal kind of a passive voice kind of idea is like, hmm, el correo, post office, el correo, hmm, se abre a las nueve o se abre a las ocho? Does it open at eight or does it open at nine? Is it opened at nine? And we're talking about something in an impersonal way. So you may hear a, a say, uh, put in the middle of that. Let's go back to our E to I stem changers. Mm. Otra pregunta. Uh, ooh, I don't want another P so let's eliminate that one. I'm gonna say mini net. No quiero pedir. You know, we have fewer viewer, verbs to choose from. Ah, I keep getting PD. <laughs> okay. Uh, it's uh, I'll take it as I'm here. Pides dinero de tus padres. Do you ask for? Money. Money <laughs> from your parents. And because we're asking tú, we would answer with a yo, right? Pido. 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 But never pedo. pedo. Always pido. 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 Okay. Pido. A ver. We're going to try to get rid of pedir and uh, hit on a different one. Ooh. Ooh. Perfecto. Perfecto. Sigues a una persona famosa en Instagram. Seguir to follow. To follow. Mm -hmm. Ah, ¿cómo se traduce? In ¿Cómo se yes. traduce? Oh. La pregunta. What does this question ask? Are you following are you a famous, person, a famous on person on Instagram? Do you follow or are you following? Do mm -hmm. you follow or are you following? Sigues yeah. a una persona famosa. Do you follow a famous person in Instagram? Mm -hmm. No, sigo. Oh. No, sigo. Ah. No sigo. No sigo a nadie. No sigo a nadie en Instagram. I don't follow anybody on Instagram. Sí. Uh, um, uh, sigo a, when we name a human being, right? Uh, sigo. Sigo. Is sigo spelled S-I-G-O or S-I-G-U-O? S-I-G-O. S-I-G-O. That you has a job to just sit there and make the G go to a g g g sound. Okay. And the U is not pronounced. So it's only job is to sit there and make G go into a hard sound because C-I-G-E-S would be c g s But it's say gear. We need that that U. But we don't need the U anymore with a G-O because G-O automatically goes, gives the G that hard sound. Sigo. Uh, sigo a Elon Musk, sigo a Jeff Bezos, sigo a no sé quién, sigo a Kim Kardashian. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, but if I, I said I follow the news and that's not a person, do I use the ah uh, then? No. Uh, por ejemplo, sigo, la sigo las noticias, sigo las noticias, sigo las noticias, I follow the las news. Noticias. Okay. Sí. Eso es, sí. Okay. Uh, and this seguir <laughs> is very 
Yeah, this sedir is very, uh, it literally can mean you're literally walking behind somebody. It can mean that. Uh, uh, but uh, people now in the, the uh, yeah, Instagram and uh, um, uh, you know, YouTube and all that age, <clears throat> social media age, uh, redes sociales do use this verb a lot to say that they follow people. Okay, vamos a ver. Otro ejemplo, otro ejemplo. Uh, a ver, a ver, a ver. ¿Qué te... Uh, otra vez, sigues. Sigues, ah, una pregunta excelente, muy conversacional. Sigues deportes en la tele. Sigues deportes. And here, here is another, it's not talking about human, is it? Sigues deportes. Do you follow sports? Deportes. ¿Qué deporte sigues? ¿Qué deporte sigues? What sport do you follow? Ah, ¿cómo se dice? I follow football. Sigo deportes en fútbol. Sigo fútbol americano. No, 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 fútbol americano. Ah. Sigo, <laughs> sigo béisbol, sigo fútbol, uh, soccer, sí, uh -huh. sigo fútbol. Uh, sigo tenis, sigo, uh, sí, pero sigues deportes, do you follow sports? And there you get an example, no a personal, because that, Deportes isn't a human being, so I don't need an A. Ah, it's just sigues deportes, you follow sports. Okay, a ver, otro ejemplo, otra pregunta. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. And I'll give you the link to this so you can kind of play this with yourself a later time. ¿En qué clase repites mucho vocabulario? ¿En qué clase? En clase de Marilyn. Ah, bien. En la clase de Marilyn. Ah, ¿cómo se contesta? How do we answer repites in the answer? The, and, and then, how do we answer repites from the question into the answer? Repite. Repito. 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 Repito a uh, mucho vocabulario en la clase de bla, 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 bla. Okay, vale, magnífico. Right, right. A tu verb in the question gets a yo verb in the answer. Because we're asking you, do you do it? And you have to answer and I do it. So that verb has to change. Ah, perfecto. Decir, to say, to tell. Siempre dices la verdad a tus padres. <laughs> a tus padres. Uh, we could fill in. This is designed really for teenagers. Uh, you might want to fill in a su esposo, esposa. Siempre dices la verdad. And that, that no just means don't you. The no at the end just says, don't you? <laughs> siempre dice, siempre digo. Always. Digo. You're always. Decir digo. muy irregular. Very irregular, right? The yo form is digo. It gets a go. It just does. It's a very regular verb. It is an I stem changer, right? But the yo form gets a go at the end. It just does. Uh, um, Siempre digo, siempre digo. And actually, the way you'd really hear it answered is, les digo, les digo, I tell them. It would, be more common oh. to, it would be more common to hear it, but that's throwing in an extra thing as uh -huh. les digo, right? Decir is very seldom used, very seldom used without a me, a te, a, a, a nos, a le, a les, right? Because we're always telling somebody and that somebody is a little pronoun that comes before, in this case, a digo. Les digo, I tell them. Le digo, I tell him. Le digo can also mean I tell her. Le digo can also mean I tell you the polite you mm -hmm. usted, okay? Uh, bien, okay, a ver. Uh, bam, 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 bam. Uno más, one more. Ah, we're, we're going to get rid of that one because I don't mm. want to use this video. <laughs> That's not as common. I want to get another they see it or something. Algo. Ah, ooh. This is palabras malas mucho. A veces. A veces o nunca. Palabras malas, bad yeah. words. Well, really, there are different ways to say that in Spanish. Uh, palabrotas, uh, like cuss words. Pal, 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 palabrotas, 
would be a cuss word. Okay, this is palabras malas, but that mucho, a lot, a veces, sometimes, or nunca. A veces. A veces. ¿Cómo se digo contesta? palabras, digo palabras. Digo palabras a veces. A veces. Uh, depende, de, depende del día. A veces digo malas palabras mucho. Pero no puedo decir, no digo palabras malas nunca. I cannot say never. No, eso es imposible. Ok, a ver, uno más. One more. And then we will leave this for a different one. A ver, a ver. Uh, reglas de... Well, padres, uh, that's a little bit. Yeah. Siempre sigues <laughs> las reglas. You follow rules. <laughs> let's change the... Oh, let's change this question. Vamos a cambiar la pregunta. Siempre, escuchen, por favor. Siempre sigues las reglas uh, de velocidad. Speed. Mm. <laughs> Siempre yeah, sigle, sigues las reglas de la velocidad en, en la autopista, on the highway. Uh, okay. Sí. Uh, ¿Es uh, es ¿Lo mejor? No. Is that sí. Me? No, no sigo la velocidad. Oh, no. de la velocidad. <laughs> sí. Sí, siempre sigo las reglas de la velocidad, speed, <laughs> o a veces sigo las reglas <laughs> de la velocidad. A veces. ¿Sí? A, a, veces. Veces. a veces, a veces, sometimes, a veces, a veces. <laughs> a veces. Ok. A menudo. Eso es, sí. Ok. Uh, I will give you the link for that so that you can kind of spin that and okay. see about okay. They They are just showing you... Uh, different ways or different ways you would, yeah, different sentences, yeah. different questions you would typically uh, hear those mm -hmm. E to I stem changer verbs. And I am copying that link. So I make sure I've got the exact correct link to send you afterwards. Okay, a ver, uh, bueno. So, um, let's, Let's go back to kind of just in general, two little fun things to see if you can put, we're gonna review which things, which things go into which categories because we've got the three categories. So we're gonna start off with a really easy one first. Move on to a harder one next. Okay, a ver. Hay tres, hay, there are, hay tres categorías, mm -hmm. cambios de raíz. Cambios de raíz means a stem changer. They call it a root changer. Cambios de raíz. Raíz is a root. Raíz. The root is the first part of that verb. We've got the A-R, okay. we've got the E-R, we've got the yeah. R, the I-R. Let's see if we can put them into the categories. Mm -hmm. O to you, E, E to I, E to I, because you just have to know that these are going to fall into one of these three groups. Okay. Pedir. Where are we going to put them? E, I. E, I. E, Fantástico. Encontrar. No. Okay. O -E. O -E. O -E. That is a giveaway because it's got an O right there, mm -hmm. right? Couldn't be in here. Okay, encontrar. En inglés, ¿qué es encontrar? En inglés, ¿qué es encontrar? Encontrar. To meet. To continue? Uh, to meet. What, what English word does it kind of, sort of, look like? Encounter. 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 And so you morph mm -hmm. that idea of encounter a little bit, encontrar, to find. To find. Okay. Empezar. Empezar. I E. to I E. Muy importante. This is one of the most important E to I E stem changers you can know because it is frequently, frequently used to say that something starts at a certain time. So anybody tells you that some, you know, a concert starts, a meeting starts, they're going to use empezar. Okay. Uh, bien. Pensar. E to I. E to I. E. Pensar. Pensar means to think. 
to think. It can also okay. mean to intend to do something. Ooh, we'll talk about that with the two verb together thing again. Pensar generally means to think, that mental activity. Okay, querer. E to I E. Querer to want, right? To want. Mm -hmm. And querer is, I would say, equally as important as empezar. Querer is one of the top, top 10 words you need, mm -hmm. one of the top 10 verbs you need to know in Spanish. Querer to want. It also can mean to love, okay? Mm -hmm. Not generally as in romantic love as much mm -hmm. as uh, love for your friends, love for your family, right? Mm -hmm. Quiero a mi familia, I love my family, right? Um, and, but querer generally to want, but it can mean to love. Okay, preferir, ooh, ooh. I e. Uh, e to I e. It's asking you to make a choice out of a group, right? Prefiero, mm -hmm. prefiero. Okay, volver. O to U E. O to U E. Uh, this is a verb, by the way, that fits into that verb one, verb two. And it uses an ah in between, and then it changes the meaning from return to do something again. Uh, mm. So, vuelvo a clase, I'm returning to class. Vuelvo a casa a las nueve, I'm coming home at nine, right? Vuelvo a, I'm returning to a place, I'm coming back to a place. But, vuelvo a with a verb, Vuelvo a comer. I'm eating again. Ooh, volver can mm. have a double meaning. Yeah, when it's mm. paired up with a verb, it means to do something again. Mm. When volver is paired up with a place, it means to come back to a place. Okay, to come mm. back. Uh, repetir, repetir. E to I, right? And this is important for commands. If you ask somebody to repeat something, you're gonna say that as a command and it will sound like this. Repita, por favor. Repita más despacio, por favor. Repeat more slowly, please. Repita más despacio, por favor. Bien, okay. A ver, a uh, repetir, e to I, almorzar. O to you. O to you e. O to you e. To you e. Okay. And by the way, almorzar, um, to eat lunch. lunch. They always put this in the OTUE category for people to learn, but uh, el almuerzo, lunch, is in some countries called la comida. The, I know, and mm -hmm. it sounds like just the food. Mm -hmm. La comida means the big meal of the day, which mm -hmm. lunch mm -hmm. tends mm -hmm. to be. Okay, uy, fácil, seguir, mm -hmm. easy one. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, I I, seguir, to continue, seguir. to follow, <laughs> okay? To continue, to follow, seguir, jugar, jugar. It, I know it's not an O, but it is in that UE. It's the only U that goes to UE. Mm -hmm. So we stick it in that same category because it just is. Okay. Servir. Servir. to IE. Set right. See, exacto. A poder. UE. O to your E. Poder, poder, poder. Puedo, puedes, puede, que. Dormir. Cerrar. Cerrar to close. Cerrar to close. Entender. E to I E. Bien. E U costar. O to you E. There are only two ways you're going to hear costar. Because I don't cost any money, and we don't cost any money, and you sure don't cost any money. <laughs> so it'll always be cuesta, it costs, or cuestan, they cost. And I'm talking about my shoes, los zapatos, <laughs> las botas, boots, cuestan. Las botas cuestan 100 dólares. The boots cost mm. 100 bucks, right? Cuesta. Uh, okay. Sí. Uh, mm -hmm. la, pero la comida cuesta mucho. Oh, wow, food costs a lot. La comida cuesta mucho. Bien. Okay. Bien. You will also hear costar used with frequently me in front of it to say me cuesta. It costs me, meaning it's hard for me to do something. Mm. 
Ah, ah, me cuesta, me mm -hmm. cuesta, me cuesta cocinar tanto. It costs me to, uh, yeah, they're not talking about that kind of money. Me cuesta means it's hard for me to do something. It's hard because it costs me effort. It costs me effort, okay? Uh, so, un ejemplo, uh, two examples. So, here's one thing I want to point <coughs> out to you. A ver. Um, ba, 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 um, I've given you this list, but you know what? Here is a list. Well, good Lord. <laughs> are you are you seriously going to memorize like uh, no? <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, you'd be going into the hundreds uh, of verbs. Are yeah. you seriously gonna I, I realistically are you gonna memorize them all? No, but you're gonna listen because as you hear people using it you will hear those stem changes in the middle of those verbs and you'll just know, oh, it's a stem changing verb. So here's what I want you to do for homework for next week. Memorize can, all? No, no not <laughs> Memorize them all. No, uh, absolutely no, absolutely not. So when you look at lists like this, uh, you know, these are super helpful because they tell you, oh, which category, but, and also super helpful because here is the word that came up that somebody had a question. Acertar. Acertar. Yeah. To guess. To guess. Uh, acierto. Aciertas. Acierta. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, there you go. Um, okay. Um, are, and by the way, I will. Oh, mm. This is to cross, like you're crossing a river, you're crossing a bridge. Mm -hmm. But if you're crossing the street, people aren't going to use that word. They're going to use cruzado, which isn't a stem changer. I want you, you know, are you likely to use confesar? Are you likely to <laughs> in a, a, use depender? Are you likely uh, to uh, be using gobernar in a 15 minute conversation with somebody? No, you're not. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> but there are lots of verbs, but are you gonna use tener? You betcha. Are you going to use nevar? Well, maybe it depends on where you are, right? Are you going to use calentar? Well, if you cook a lot, yes. If you never cook, you're not likely to ever use that verb. So here's what is important. I want you to look at this list of the A, E to I, E, O to you here. Here's another one. Are you going to, unless you're a priest, <laughs> unless you're a priest, do you seriously like confession up and go? Yeah. <laughs> if you're hearing confession, well, God bless you. You need that verb. Te absuelvo. There are things you don't need. Here is my point. Don't focus on every single thing. Focus on what you are likely to use. You are likely to use repetir, to ask somebody to repeat something. You are likely to use decir because everybody says the word say or tell. Uh, you are likely to hear people using seguir to tell you, hey, keep going straight. Keep go, uh, go, go, go ahead for four more blocks, okay? You are likely to use servir to ask if they serve a certain type of food. I want you for homework to pick out five verbs from this list, just five, and give five things that you do or your husband does or five things that somebody does, five things. Five on each changes or what? No, what no, five, pick five, changes? five of those verbs that you are most likely to use. Oh, okay. So if I absolver, no, I don't want to hear anybody using that because you're not going to use that. <laughs> yeah. uh, so pick five that would be likely for you to use. That is the key, okay? Um, all right, and uh, build a sentence around it and keep it very simple. Uh, and don't just say, yo cierro, I close. You know, <laughs> say, 
say, uh, yeah, say I close the windows when it's hot. Yeah, say, <laughs> don't just say I sleep. Uh, I, <laughs> I sleep, I only sleep six hours. Yes, so add some detail uh, besides just the verb. Entienden, understand? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And you'll share some of those in some smaller groups and kind of help correct each other and ask me questions if you've got them. See? Si? Bien? Mm -hmm. Okay. Vale. Bueno. Let's do a general review on some stem changes. <coughs> and then we're going to do just a non-related activity for conversation fun. Whoop, perdón. Yeah. Doing that right. A ver. Okay. A ver. Vamos a conjugar. We're going to conjugate some of these verbs. Mi hijo. Mi hijo. We cannot quiere. just say querer. Mi hijo. Quiere. 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 It should not sound mm -hmm. like quiera. There, yeah. By the way, there is a verb, quiera, with an a at the end. But it is what they call subjunctive. And you definitely don't want yeah. that. It is Good. mi hijo quiere. Oh, here is a verb one and a verb two. Look at what happens to the second verb. Here's what he wants to do. What he wants to do is do what, guys? Collect. Collect. To collect insects. Bugs, yeah. Hijo quiere coleccionar. So here's what happens. Quiere and a second verb, they go right next to each other. They don't need an A. They don't need a K. They're right next to each other. Quiere coleccionar insectos. I thought it said cocinar. Ah, <laughs> cocinar. <laughs> es posible. Es posible. It is possible. Uh, I'm going to help you out a little bit with this one. Uh, nos. You need a nos in front of that one. Oh, uh, that is what they call a reflexive verb. So it needs an extra pronoun. Sentirse means to feel, to feel an emotion or to feel a sensation of some kind. Then Tom is that the Sentimos. Sentimos. Nos sentimos muy estresados. We feel, we feel <laughs> very <laughs> stressed out. <laughs> Exacto. This one also sadly needs a little pronoun. I'm going to put in what it should be so you know. Ana, we're talking only about Ana. So here's a little pronoun we need. Ana <laughs> se... Acostarse, by the way, means to go to bed. To go to bed. Acuestarse. Acuesta. Acuesta. Ana se acuesta. And by the way, yes, there is a form that is acueste with an e at the end. It is what they call subjunctive. You don't want that. You want se acuesta. Ana. Se acuesta. Ana se acuesta. Ah, uh, Ana no se acuesta nunca. Sin cenar. She never goes to bed sin cenar without dinner. Eating dinner. Exacto. Bien. Okay. Ah, jugar. Play a game. Play a sport. Las niñitas. Juegan. 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 Ah, yes. Juegan a las muñecas. Muñecas son dolls. Dolls. Barbie. Yeah. Las niñas juegan a las muñecas. Roberto. Perder means to lose. It can also mean to miss a vehicle. Pierde. 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 Roberto pierde el autobús con yeah. frecuencia. Pierde el autobús. Pierde normally means to lose, but when you yeah. miss a miss. vehicle. Frequently. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, um, when we frequent. miss the bus. Frequency. Yeah, we use perder. <laughs> Roberto pierde el autobús. <laughs> because, <laughs> uh, because you know what? In English we say, oh, I miss, I miss my grandkids. That's a different verb. It's not perder. Perder is okay. miss when you miss the bus, miss, miss the train, miss your plane, miss, miss the vehicle. Miss something. Okay. Pedir. Elisa y yo. Pedimos. Pedimos. Pedimos comida rápida a veces. We order fast food. Fast food. Fast food. Comida rápida es fast food. A veces, sometimes. 
el bebé duerme duerme en el carricoche carriage yeah stroller yeah carricoche stroller duerme duerme ah this needs a little me in front of it I'm not I I freak out Here's how you say, I freak out. What you literally say is, I'm dying of panic. Me? Me muero. Me muero. Pánico en un avión. Avión. On the plane of panic. I freak out on a plane. Ah, here's where you may hear me muero. And, and by the way, this is conversational. Me muero does not mean I'm killing myself. <laughs> no. I commit a suicide. No, 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 no. no. Uh, Not yet. Me muero is used quite conversationally to say, me muero de hambre. I'm dying of hunger. Mm -hmm. me, mu me, muero. me muero de sed. I'm dying of thirst. See, me yeah. muero de miedo, or I'm dying of fear. Okay, so, uh, you know, just like you'd say, I'm dying of, yeah. Okay. Uh, quien? Who can speak? Ooh, gallego is a, a, a language in northwestern Spain. Quien? Puede. 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 Quien is always conjugated as if it were for él or ella or usted, because quien refers to this many people. It's one person, undetermined as of yet, but one person. Quien puede hablar? Quien puede hablar? Notice, just like quiere coleccionar, two verbs, it's puede hablar, can speak. And those two verbs, poder and querer, both get matched up with a second verb and no little word in between. Yeah? Yeah. Puede yeah. hablar. Okay. Ustedes, you guys, Prefer to eat hard. Prefer. 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 Recuerda, 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 nadie recuerda la fecha, nobody remembers the date, date on a calendar, nadie recuerda la fecha, nadie recuerda, a recuerda, nadie quien indicate this many people, it gets a conjugation for a onesie mm -hmm. conjugation, yeah, hey, probar, Probar Pueden. is a stem chair. You can Pueden. guess it's a U-E. Probar means Pueden. to taste. Prueban. Prueban can mean, Pueden. means to Pueden. try Pueden. out. To try on. Yeah, to try Pueden. on clothing or to Pueden. try out a type Pueden. of food. To taste. Just you try a little bit. Yeah, How do you pronounce that, Marilyn, again? Prueban. 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 Prueba. Ellos prueban Prueba. la comida cubana. They're trying la out Cuban food. They are tasting. We may even in English say they are sampling mm -hmm. Cuban food. Okay. They're not eating a whole plate uh, full. They're trying some out. Prueba. Y... Okay. This verb probar can be used for tasting food. It can be used for trying on clothing to see if it fits. Mm. To see if it fits. Okay. Um, okay. Almorzar. Almorzar. Ustedes almuerzan a las dos de, uh, eh, en España. Um, Bien. Uh, two o'clock. Yeah, that's a kind of a normal time. Uh, yeah. uh, medir is an adverb. Medir, um, medir is used, means to measure, to measure. Yeah. And it is used for measuring things, like if you cut them out, it's used for measuring things when you cook. It is used to measure ingredients, height, height of a person, a kid, okay? Or like a size. 
Mi madre. Miede. Miede. Oh, this one is not an IE. This one is an I. Miede. 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 Not miede. 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 Okay. So this is throwing in some different verbs you haven't seen yet. Medir means to measure or uh, like to talk about somebody's height or the, the, or the size of a thing, uh, the size of an animal. Uh, ooh, I think I've got a good video for that. Okay. Uh, el turista. Vuelve. Vuelve. Vuelve a su país. Vuelve a su país. Returns to his country. El turista vuelve a su país. Okay. Um, I want you this week to do the bottom half. Some of them okay. may have little pronouns if it's got to say. Don't worry if you get that part wrong. Uh, but I'll give you a little preview. Divertirse means to have a good time. To have a good time. You don't use tener at all. Joy. Divertirse means to have a good time. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll, you'll need a little say in front of that. Resolver means to solve. Vestirse means to get dressed. Sugerir means to suggest. Reirse means to laugh at. Mm -hmm. Devolver means to return an item somewhere else or to somebody. Mm -hmm. Pensar means to think, the think. mental process, servir, to serve, mm -hmm. empezar, to begin, mm -hmm. entender, mm -hmm. to understand, mm -hmm. costar, mm -hmm. to cost, mm -hmm. regar means to water, oh, to okay. put water on, okay. to give water to plants. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh. Mentir okay. is yeah. to lie, to tell a falsehood. Mm -hmm. Repetir is to repeat. Repetir, repeat. Conseguir. Repetir is to get as an obtain. Oh, grab that and obtain it. Uh, those are harder verbs than the top tier, but mm -hmm. uh, worth doing and see. And, and the ones that might be a little tricky, there are some E to I changers that are laying in wait there. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, just see how many of those you get right. Okay, all right. Uh, I want to finish out with something that is just kind of fun. I'm going to send you into breakout rooms. This. It has nothing to do with stem changers. Hmm? Para divertirse. Have fun. Yeah, get, get those pop-ups out of here. And you'll see this in the breakout rooms when you go into the breakout rooms. ¿Cuál es diferente en cada serie? Which one is different in each series? And why? Okay, because okay. of our time limits, we're going to look at just the first mm -hmm. one. La toya. We're going to look at la ducha. We're going to look at a ah, and do a ah together, so you know what you're supposed to do. La ducha, la taza, el lavabo, la toalla. Which which one of those four items does not fit? It's la taza. La taza. Okay. Bueno. So you're picking oh. out which one is different in the series. Y por qué? Oh, Why? Oh, por qué? Okay. Okay. Not okay. Not la taza. So how could we condense this into one little sentence? La taza. We could say, we could answer this in many ways, the por qué question. La taza, uh, 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 no uso mm -hmm. la taza en el baño. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In the bathroom. La taza no está en el baño. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, la ducha, el lavabo y la toalla están en el baño. Mm -hmm. The answer is por qué. Bien? <laughs> ¿Entienden? ¿Understand? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. And we're going to put you into just random rooms for this <laughs> one. It's very, very ace. Muy fácil. Oh. Ay, a ver. Uy. Uh, and you will see these when you hit your breakout room. So you're picking the one item that doesn't fit and give a quick little explanation 
of yeah. why. Okay, and they get they've got pictures, so you know what they are. And hit your join buttons, and I will send this in.
Okay. Uy, a ver. Vamos a ver, vamos a ver. I'm looking at my countdown here. Casi listos. Okay. Aquí vienen. We got some more people coming in now. Sí. Okay. Uh, no hay una sola respuesta para contestar. There is not just one way to respond to these. Sí. Está bien. Sí. Sí. A ver. Uh, correcto. De acuerdo, ¿no? Um, okay. Bueno, por ejemplo, por ejemplo, uh, aquí vienen todos. Here comes everybody else. Okay. A ver. Entonces, por ejemplo, uh, el ejemplo B, B, tenedor, la lavadora, el armario, la mesa. Now, oh, there are different ways you can look at this one. Ooh. Yeah. You don't have it up. We don't have it up. ¿Cuál? ¿Cuál? We can't see. Oh, perdón. Lo siento. Ok. Perdón. Ok. Ok. Aquí. Eh. ¿Cuál, ¿Cuál es la cosa? ¿Cuál es diferente en la serie en parte B? El tenedor. El tenedor. El tenedor. El tenedor. ¿Por qué? ¿Por qué? Uh -huh. Porque no. la, la, la vedería. Y el amor y la mesa es... Um, uh, 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 okay. Es posible decir el tenedor es muy pequeño. 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 Es, es posible decir, sí, uh, que mm, la lavadora, oh. el armario, la mesa son grandes. Okay. ¿no? O oh. que... Mm. Son no muebles, usa, son el tenedor, o máquinas. No ropa, ropa, no ah, sí, ropa, se asocia ropa. con la ropa a veces. Bueno, sí, mm -hmm. sí, es posible. Muy bien. Uh, le, ¿Cuál es diferente en, la, en el ejemplo C? El sofá, el la sillón, basura. la cama, la basura. La, la basura. La basura. La basura. Ah, sí. Uh, la uh, el sofá el sillón y la cama son muebles muebles son muebles they are furniture, furniture. La basura okay. no es mueble no. la basura no es mueble okay. el sofá no el sillón la cama son muebles sí se sienta you sit down se sienta en un sofá se sienta oh, en el un sillón. Oh, ah, se sienta, se puede sentarse. Um, uh, se puede sentar en la cama. Bien. Ok, uh, uh, perdón. ¿Y eh, uh, cuál es diferente en el ejemplo de el horno, la consola, Hola. la alfombra, Hola. la nevera? Hola. La alfombra. Hola. La alfombra. La alfombra. ¿Por qué? Sino eléctrico. Sí, no, eléctrico. eléctrico. Oh. Uh -huh. sí, ah. La alfombra no es una máquina. Sí, el horno. Encienta. La sí. consola sí. no sí. es sí. en mi casa. La. Ah, ok. Sí. Yeah. sí. <laughs> ah, ah, la so, casa, la cocina. consola y la Cos no ver. Ah, sí, en la cocina. Uh, la consola, sí. bueno, en cualquier, se, se usa en cualquier uh, cuarto. You use a, a console, gaming console, any place. Pero la alfombra está en el suelo, ¿sí? Uh, mm. la, alfombra, no. la alfombra no es eléctrica. eléctrica. Oh. No es eléctrica, ¿verdad? Oh, no, no es eléctrica. eléctrica. La alfombra no usa electricidad, mm -hmm. pero el horno sí, la consola sí, la nevera sí. El horno sí. 
Vale, bien. Um, mm -hmm. We'll then play a game like this next week with different items, probably a uh, set of three of those, sí, tres. Uh, so mm -hmm. we'll play something similar to that again next week. I am also going to send you in homework, you're going to uh, pick five stem changing verbs to build a sentence and share them with some classmates and smaller breakout sessions. Okay. Uh, I'm also going to send you video uh, on tener idioms and also I'm going to send you the beginning sentences using tener idioms but there's going to be a dot 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 you need to finish each sentence mm -hmm. you will need to figure yes. out how to finish each yes. sentence and I will send you what those sentences. sentences are so you can plan out how would I finish these because there will be many ways to finish the sentences, even though the beginning of the sentence will be the same for all of you, there'll be different ways to end them. So you'll be doing another breakout session using tener idioms. And again, tener idioms, uh, we're going to review that because vale la pena, it is worth the effort. Tener idioms are used a lot. They are merely expressions we do not translate literally. And they are ways we use tener with a lot of common words to talk about how somebody feels, basically, or what somebody's experience has been. Um, you know, they talk about things like hunger, thirst, jealousy, being right, uh, being successful, uh, uh, lots and lots and lots of tener idioms. And you'll get a, a, a video to watch to prep you for that. And then you'll have sentences. You're going to figure out a way that you might conversationally finish the sentence. Bien? Bien. 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 Excelente. 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 Uh, entonces, <laughs> I'm going to stop our recording here.